this is about a larger systemic change about the kind of system we operate in. I believe that this is the moment that we need democracy more than ever. We need more people of all types of backgrounds to step up and offer their expertise to solve the challenges in each of our communities. Let's do what we know to be the right thing and be true to that inner voice. I didn't ask to be treated differently, but I'm going to take it on because I have a job to do and nothing's going to get in my way of doing that. Go get yourself a political home. You know, Vote Relieve would love to be that home. Black Voters Matter would love to mm -hmm. be that home for you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for leading and running as you are. And I have your back. Hi, Erin. Hi, Lauren. How are you? So glad to see you. Hi, Me everybody. Too. Yes, you are making my day today. This is, the sunshine is finally here in New York City. I'm having a conversation with you, um, and things are looking up. Thanks. So, thanks for joining us. Okay, great. We're a few more folks are coming on. Um, I know we only have until just a few minutes before four. We've got to get you to your next um, your next event. Your next engagement um and i'm just so yeah. in a hearing right now we're doing our oh. first live streamed hearing i think really like of the congress with veterans affairs and so my team is going to send me a little heads up when i have five okay minutes. so you tell me we'll you tell me run over totally. to talk veterans <laughs> okay that's fantastic i'm so glad to see more of the technology being used that's so good for our rural communities for that's great that's fantastic so let's jump right in i mean as we were um you know, this is a new time, this is a new normal, a strange normal. Your background as a registered nurse, your background um, in health policy. One of the things I'm finding really fascinating that you're, you're able to do is to continue to get resources for your community, but also to get resources for really vulnerable populations and pass bipartisan legislation. But you have a pretty um, white district. I think six, six out of the seven of your counties are considered rural. Um, and here you are really able to balance some of the um, conversation and leadership on the racial disparities we're seeing of coronavirus. And it's really beautiful to watch. It's really a model. And I'd love to talk more and just hear about how you're navigating some of that, what the reception has been with your constituents as well. Well, you know, this has been really interesting. In our state, we've been a hot spot the entire time coronavirus has been in the United States. We had an early case. Uh, we've had early economic impact. We're the first state to actually have in-state testing capacity. And so this is something that people understand has impacted us really specifically, even yeah. if it is a disproportionate level of deaths in communities of color. Uh, but people, I think, understand the COVID threat really um, locally, and they understand that they too could be infected. They, that someone that they love, could you know fall sick, and they too could have struggled to access resources. So it's not so much that you're helping them and trying mm. to sell that like that we are doing something for somebody else. People really understand that it could be me, and but for God's grace, maybe it's not me. But uh, that you know this is something that's literally all around us, and that we have to be really vigilant and careful in order to continue to protect ourselves and our families. Yeah, and I, I think you you communicate that really well. I think that's one of your natural gifts, actually, uh, is, um, is that communication. Um, big deal, you just held past $45, mil $45 million, is that right, for right. colleges and universities. Um, even, you know, I think you've passed the most bills, if I'm correct, as a freshman congresswoman for this class. Is that, is that what's buzzing around? Yeah. I don't know about okay, that. Well, it's I think a lot. That's just like, you know, some good Matt talk from Cheer. Okay. I remember Matt talk. Um, yeah. But I do think that, you know, we have been really focused on making sure that the legislation that we work on has broad support, that it could pass in this 116th Congress, and that we're working on really discrete things that can make a difference in people's lives. You know, there's a lot of talk about big, bold ideas, and I get excited about them too. But my constituents elected me for this two year term to make a difference for them right now. Yeah. And yep. I've been and, you know, really focused on trying to make sure that we make the most of every day to deliver for them. But you are in an environment that is hyper-partisan. You are in an environment where, you know, I was there for the swearing in the, you know, the, the, the halls of Congress have never looked like that before. You know, we're not even with a new congresswoman, but with the staff. And, the, and so you're, you know, it can be a, a sort of hostile place. How are you building relationships? How are you able to continue 
they do this bipartisan legislation? Well, I'll tell you what, this has been quite a journey. It is the most difficult job I've ever had, that's for sure. You know, one of the things I didn't quite conceptualize is that I'd have this huge job as being the congresswoman and then also have to continue to run the campaign. You know, yeah. I had an opponent who filed with the federal government to run against me two weeks after I was elected. So before I was even sworn in. Uh, somebody yeah. was coming after me for 2020. And so we never had the luxury of only focusing on that one job. And so while I've been trying to build relationships and, you know, get to know my colleagues, I've constantly been, you know, fighting on both fronts. And that just takes a lot of time. So what I've learned is that, um, you know, I'm prioritizing like my truest friendships, the people I love yeah. most in life and trying to be there for them. Um, and then trying to deliver for the people of the 14th and give them my very best every day. And I can't always be super congresswoman and have the best relationships across the Congress and get to yeah. know every single Republican colleague and all these other things because, you know, I serve on three committees and I'm on a leadership committee and I just am doing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take a breath. Yeah. Right. But then I mean, I get to do it during the time of coronavirus. And for me, this has been such a wonderful opportunity to focus and do yeah. this work, this really intense work, but have the opportunity to do it in the way where I'm bringing my best self to work every day. I am not just like chronically fatigued. I'm not eating crap and just, you know, just snacking my way through the day with sweet teas, trying to just keep the energy up, right? I'm <laughs> able to like really bring the very best that I have inside me to my work right now. And this is, um, it's been great. Yeah. I mean, and you're right. Like, I think you had, what, six opponents the first time that you had to beat in the primary. Two weeks later, you know, somebody files. It's a familiar story to folks at Vote Run Lead, of, of which you are an alum. We have a very diverse population. You're a black right. woman. You're a young black woman, you know, and it's like, how dare she have this seat, right? Boop, file. And it's it's sort of tough to watch the number of folks that are uh, in the primary, in the opponents of you and several other of the young freshmen um, women of color. Yeah. Um, and it's, a, it's not unusual, right? Um, and I, part of me is like, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you know, th they know it's sort of this wave of women who are coming with fresh perspectives. Um, and it's good to hear the ways that you're staying resilient. I think, you know, I'd love to have you share some ways that some of the women in our community can continue to stay resilient. We are, we've been doing these workshops every Saturday, which have been fantastic. Um, but people cabinet? have, yeah, the kitchen cabinet. Okay. They've been great. And, you know, a lot of candidates are hopping on to sort of get that hit of love, get that, you know, a minute for the right reasons. Um, and I'd love just a couple words of wisdom for folks who are running right now to sort of keep that sort of resilience that you are sharing. Yes. Okay. Well, here's the deal, ladies. Um, I've been giving these pep talks to some people running for state and local office in my congressional district. And I think a lot of people are scared to be campaigning right now. I think a lot of people are hesitant to be doing the work, but they're running against opponents who literally aren't leading, who yeah. have sat out the most significant uh, economic and healthcare crisis that has come to many of our communities and who aren't offering resources. And what a great opportunity to demonstrate your leadership uh, by doing the work right now. There's so yeah. many things that we can do to be of value and to be of service to our communities, even while we're sheltering at home and, and you know, staying uh, physically distant from one another. Uh, that is not an excuse for no leadership. So um, I would encourage people to even be more visible than they would have otherwise been during this period, not less, number one. There's a lot that you can do. I recognize a lot of people are running with very small teams. They don't have a lot of resources. They don't have staff. They don't have consultants. They don't have all of those things. It's just them. And so it can feel a little bit overwhelming. Um, but we found you know, Facebook Lives and those types of events have been really popular. Um, calling through in your community and just checking on people. Yeah. I mean, what a way to be there for folks. And then remembering why you decided to run. And this is a question that I've been asking people a lot. Do you want to win? No one can answer that except for you. And if you want to win, you need to act like it and do things to help yourself win every day. Because even though it might feel like things are on pause, your opponents are not pausing. 
and we cannot afford to set out to sit out this time so you know maybe this is a good time to work on your website maybe this is a good time to start filming yourself on camera maybe this is a good time to do all type of stuff like that but like don't be sitting out Um, yeah you're missing an opportunity to demonstrate your leadership and you're missing an opportunity to help yourself win one of the things we've been talking about and that I've, I've actually seen I'm on your email list um it, you know, is that surrogates have been coming through for you. I mm-hmm. think that's something for folks also to really start to use other people to say, hey, I need you to make a public endorsement. Hey, I need you to like put this email out for me, even if it's to 10 friends, right, on the local level. It doesn't have to that's be right. Elizabeth Warren, who's in my inbox every day for you, which I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, I'll do my part. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think one of those things that – Speaking of Elizabeth Warren and some of the stuff that's, you know, the conversation that she helped to crack open, that it was always there, but this idea of the, some of the structural changes, right? Some yeah. of the real inequities. I'd love to just hear your POV on, like, what are some of the big things that we do need to do away with and replace? You know, we've been talking a lot about, like, reimagining democracy, like, reimagining what this could look like as a country for us to be, you know, to be healthy, to be, like, in care and in service of one another. A lot of folks... We had Lash Nolan on uh, last week, who's this amazing, she's the first black woman at Harvard Medical School. Cool. And she's like, I lead in love, you know, and just really thinking about how we, what are some of those big structural things that we need to reimagine? Well, my go-to is always healthcare. We have had health disparities for basically every leading cause of death in this country. Um, and COVID is no different. Uh, right. There are real disparities in care. There's disparities in basically every level of our healthcare system. And for so long, so many communities has just accepted it as normal. What I yeah. found in my year and a half in Congress is that there is a lot of support for saving lives. It's up to us to shine the spotlight. We walked in, identified a problem. I had a friend who died in, after graduate school, after giving birth to a beautiful baby girl, uh, decided that, you know, I wanted to work on this issue while I had a chance in the United States Congress. And we've grown to over 100 bipartisan members in the House to tackle the maternal mortality crisis that we have in this country. We're about to, you know, expand Medicaid coverage, I think, hopefully. I mean, it passed unanimously out of committee. So I think that we're on on a good path to make it happen. And more broadly, I think that, you know, we have lifted up an issue that had just gone unnoticed for too many for too long right and that's part of what happens when you elect different types of people to office we lift up different issues Um, there are those same type of local stories in every community and so when we talk about big structural change it means delivering for our communities and for everybody in our community and if there are some people that are suffering and they've been suffering for a long time and there is a solution well maybe we need to explore ways to stop finally solve those problems Um, And I think that that um, can-do attitude with a sense of urgency is something that makes this 116th Congress unique. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, it was interesting. I think some members of the team, I was like, you know, and she's not a mom, right? Um, And and the the idea that, um, you know, you've passed the, um, the... Breastfeeding, I can't remember the name of the actual bill, you know, the ability to to, to pump, right, which was like huge for me, like carrying that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I I think that's exactly right. You know, the the, the perspectives of people, the experiences of people finally getting into leadership. Um, I do want to open it up if you have a few minutes to some folks to ask questions in the chat. Okay, great. So we, um, if you do have a question for the Congresswoman, type it in the chat. I'm going to try to read it twice and, you know, be as, as savvy as I can as I'm, you know, looking and talking. Um, campaigning, yeah, you know, just out. don't worry, Aaron. You're doing yeah, right. They're like, do IG lives. I'm like, I don't have Instagram account, so <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm almost forty. Uh, very soon. So, you know, just thinking about the on the campaign right now, you know, it's a presidential election year. I think the wave we saw in 2018 was phenomenal. There's an immediate backlash, right, to seeing progressive women, seeing women of color get in. Um, how, like, how do we continue to sort of do this run as you are, right? How do we continue to, even in these circumstances that feel sort of overbearing, like, you know, a, a overwhelming, um, 
how do we get folks to sort of stay true to the reasons that they, as you said before, like, do you want to win? Right. And what does that look like for you right now? And I think an, an, an even more intense environment than 2018. And that was pretty intense. It was intense. You know, I think the run as you are was never about the presidency. Right. Yeah. And that, and that we had stopped ourselves from seeking office and leadership positions and, you know, better representation in our communities, because for whatever reason, we thought we were inadequate. And that's for right. sure at any level. And what has right. happened in the last four years, or maybe three years, is that we've seen a number of people step forward and be competitive. Yeah. Yeah. And put seats in play and yeah. offer a different point of view. I mean, when I look at what's happened in my own community in Northern Illinois for years, we have people on the Democratic side not even running for county board, right. not even running for state rep, because they just assumed that they would have no chance. Yeah. And then what happened? People, a different type of candidate decided to run, bringing their full authentic self, being coached and trained and supported, and all of a sudden are flipping seats. And, and for me, it's not Winning. about partisanship. It's right. about people bringing the best of themselves from their communities and deciding to run. Um, I think that this is an extraordinarily exciting time. 2020 is going to be an incredible year for women in office um, at every level of government. And as we head into redistricting, which impacts all of us, yes. so fill yes. out your census, ladies. Um, yeah. and make sure that that's incorporated in all of your communications um, in your communities, you know, we want to make sure that our communities have the very best representation. Yeah. And that's I think like, that we are equipped to do it. Yeah. And that's one of the questions. I, I think it was from Lisa, who's my new friend online from the, Hi, from the kitchen cat, um, is like vote at home, vote by mail. These, yeah. you know, so many states don't have it. States are rushing to sort of figure it out. Other states are saying, no, we're not doing it. Wisconsin was a debacle. You know, voters end up getting coronavirus, which is horrific. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love, you know, how can we be putting more pressure on our governors, on our election boards, on our state legislatures to really make this a, a viable voting option in 27 states that don't even have anything nearly as close to vote by mail? Yeah, you got to be in touch with them right now. You know, yeah. it's being characterized in Washington as like a partisan wish list thing, but at the state and local level, it's a completely different story. And so okay. even if you have a representative who hasn't always embraced election reform issues, they don't want people getting sick and they don't want the integrity of their election to be questioned. Um, and so I think that many folks in leadership are having these conversations literally right now. It is not too early and you are also not too late. So I would say to reach out to your secretary of state or your mm -hmm. local election authority, understand exactly what's going on in your community um, and who has that decision-making pen and then reach out to them like it's your highest priority item. If this is something that's important to you, you have the uh, real ability to make a difference right now. Cool. Very cool. So how are you finding the um, like technology side of sort of zooming in or whatever, whatever platform you're using? Aaron, you know, I think that I've been pretty good with technology, but I am a one woman IT department here. I have <laughs> set up all types of cords and lights and, you know, figuring this whole thing out. I mean, literally, I have three devices all streaming right now simultaneously to do two meetings at once. And, um, you know, I feel like I have a little production studio yeah. and we're going to make it happen because guess what? My community needs my leadership and I know that. And this is the only way I have to do it. So we're just rocking and rolling right now. It's been fun, you know, yeah. watching people who hadn't otherwise engaged with us. This has definitely been an opportunity to communicate to different community of people. And mm -hmm. I think that's also mm -hmm. really powerful. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I agree. I think there's, and there's a lot of tools too. Like you should have been set up from home already, right? You should have to vote. Like, well, that, this is a whole other thing on sort of like how we access democracy. But speaking of production studio and Surge, the documentary that you are one of three stars, um, is it, it's coming out soon, I think. It's, or it's, we um, screened it at something called the Athena Film Festival. We screened a bunch of the shorts. We had a, an awesome panel of like sort of future Lauren Underwoods, which was very cool. Um, 
I'd love to hear a little bit about what that experience was like of just having, this is my like personal question, like having a camera in your face as you were campaigning, you know, and going into diners. I mean, I saw all of that. It was like, how did that, how did you do it and still actually yeah. not be distracted by this crew? So what I'll tell you is early on when I decided to run, we were approached by these different projects. And so over the course of my time and running for office, we might have signed up to participate in maybe five productions, something like that. Wow. Three wow. of them didn't make it. Um, and two of them completed shooting during my run for Congress and through swearing in. And Surge um, is the one that seems to be probably closest to a world premiere. Um, yeah. Wendy and Hannah have been- And there. Hannah. Uh, yeah. Love them. And, you know, what I really appreciated was that we had an opportunity to tell the real story of this yeah. unlikely campaign and being a regular person and all of like the quiet moments, the ugly moments, like when you're ugly crying and just like so frustrated, you just want to scream to like the moments of joy and exuberance. And I haven't seen the film. Uh, oh! And I'm excited to see it whenever you look it comes amazing. out. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think that it's great that these kinds of films have received the yes. kind of acclaim that they have, because, again, it's telling women across this country that you, too, can do it and mm -hmm. you are more than enough. And, That's right. um, you know, for that, I'm just grateful uh, to be yeah. able to, you know, share my story. Yeah. Do you know, there's a vote run lead alum in every one of the documentaries and she no could be way. next and surge and in the uh, knock down the house. Yeah. Look it's pretty, impact, it's pretty cool. Aaron. It's so, so it's so fun. I'm like, I know them. Yeah. <laughs> but like even better than that, this amazing sort of collaboration, I think we're happening that is happening between people who have a different definition of what leaders look like, a different definition of what leadership is. And we need you, we need organizations like VRL, we need filmmakers and cultural and storytellers to, because we're really up against, I think, a very antiquated notion of what is leadership. And when we look at the global stage, I mean, this prime minister in New Zealand is like, got it under wraps. Like, yes, she's a series of islands, et cetera. But like, come on, you know, the leadership of women on the global stage right now has been, this powerful combination of empathy and decisiveness that we just, we think those two things can't go together. Like you can't be kind and a genius. And it's like, yes, yes, you can, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I think you're, you're definitely somebody who is doing that. And I think sometimes people don't think that's leadership. Right. Right. And it's like the, the, the care of government. And I think as a, I mean, as a former, as a registered nurse, I don't know if you're still, I don't know how that works. I'm a nurse. Um, yeah, you're not. <laughs> make it a question. It's not a question. I know. That was the other thing. I was like, you could just Google right. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, license. I mean, but the idea of like healthcare workers, what do you think of seeing more nurses, seeing more social workers, seeing more health professionals get into the political arena? I think that we need uh, more people of all types of backgrounds to step up and offer their expertise to solve the challenges in each of our communities. A lot of these positions are not full-time positions, meaning that right. you could serve on your county board and still practice clinically. And I talk to a lot of health providers and encourage nurses in particular to run and look at county boards um, because the health department is supervised by a governing body. And oftentimes that governing body is the county board. And if there's real problems going on in your community and folks aren't getting the resources, how can you make a difference? You go and you oversee that health department, right? If you're having an opioid crisis in your community and you know, you're not seeing resources flow in the way that you think is correct or you have a law enforcement only approach or you know, there's too many people dying and your coroner is not stepping up, well, run for coroner. So yes. all these positions, these people run out of post. <laughs> Just they run on a post. Do it. Yep. And yes, know? corner is an elected position. And some city's dog catcher is an elected position. Like Google it, start to really dig in. You're right. Yep. You're right. Um, um I know so I think yeah. I probably have yeah. to run. I'm not quite so. sure, but this has been so fun. Maybe we can do it. This a has been so two. fun. It's great to um, see you. And don't give I missed you like all to... last year that I was pregnant. And I'm I'm sorry. I feel like it's been a long time. Yeah. 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 Um everybody take good care of yourselves. 
thank you for your support. Thank you for leading and running as you are. And I have your back. Um, thanks for all you do. Bye, Aaron.